Hello and welcome back to this series of uh, videos of classical dressage and riding in lightness. The title of this series is Lightness Proof of Balance. My name is Manuel Trigo and we want to share the knowledge of classical dressage, more specifically the French origin, uh, and show you examples of what we are talking about. In this uh, second video, we will talk about what is lightness. Boudon, one of the French martyrs, did perfectly define what lightness is. He said, the supreme lightness is the perfect balance. Lot in his side, another French master said, without lightness, everything is difficult to perform. Thought, if it's not impossible. With lightness, nothing is difficult. Yes, lightness is also the prompt uh, response the horse makes to his rider. But the horse will not be able to respond promptly if he's not in the best balance possible. Let me give you an example. Okay, let me illustrate what I'm talking about. Let's imagine that this garrocha is the balance of the horse. As you know, a horse is not flat, like will be a table on his four legs. The horse is slightly on the four hands. His four, uh, sorry, his five nines on the four hands. But the problem is when we add the rider, it just gets it even worse. So the horse is even more unbalanced. And this is why the reason why a horse cannot be light to respond to the, the rider's aids if he's not balanced first. Because let's imagine now that I'm riding this horse with such bad balance and I push with my legs. What's going to happen? The horse is going to try to go forward, but this balance, it's like this garrocha, is going further forward and it's going to be similar to push this garrocha on the ground. So you're going to be pushing with your legs and it's going to be very laborious. However, now if before we push with the legs, we balance the horse at least level like this or even better with some collection, now the push of my leg is going to be way more efficient and this horse is going to move uh, more effortless. I said earlier the horse gets badly unbalanced when he gets a rider on his back. So what is the issue? Why? Because horses don't have collar bones here, meaning that the spine is not directly connected with bones to the legs. It's only connected with tissues and ligaments. So the spine here or this, uh, the withers here, this section, gonna be floating. So when a rider gets on the back of a horse, the horse gonna sink and it's gonna be even more on the forehand that he, was, that he is already naturally. Let me show you that. So for example, let's put, you see this little button here in the cell? We're gonna just put this whip to measure the level. I'm gonna try to stay very mm -hmm. still. Now I'm gonna ask Jane to get on the horse. And now if I move forward the whip, see the difference of distance that we got. So we got something like that. Now, let's ask Jane to get off, please. And see again the difference between the button and the whip. So this is as much the wither sink when a rider gets on a horse. And this is not depending on the size of the horse or the weight of the riders. And basically, any horse will sink between one and a half inch and two inches, bringing, of course, his balance badly on the forehead. So where to start? Yes, we want lightness, and for that, we need balance. But how to balance a young horse or a heavy horse? The answer is with lightness and balance, meaning that first uh, you need to be light in your aid and then progressively you will need to balance your horse. So here is the issue. Movement forward or too much forward is detrimental for balance. Movement forward will have tendency to unbalance the horse 
This means you will balance your horse first in slow gait or even at the heart. Then you will be uh, able to introduce movement more and more forward. If I do an analogy to human, this is will be this will be sorry like um, training a dancer because finally what we want to do is to dance with our horses. So what this girl. Uh, or boy will do first exercises on the ground of stretching exercises at the bar learning the step slowly and finally running and maybe doing a big split so it's exactly the same that we need to do with our horses beside the split um, <laughs> uh, we need to get our horses flexible work in slow gait first at the heart then maybe at the walk and finally a trot and canter but keeping the horse balance all the time without never jeopardizing the balance that we need there is not only one balance there is several balance according to what we need to do but if we rush a horse on balance forward unfortunately this horse will never be light not today not tomorrow not next year and basically never for many reasons a horse will never be light if the horse has tension in his mouth when a horse is tense in his body or mind he will lock his tmj this joint just behind his eye and the horse will have tension in his paw in his lower jaw and through his neck so if you want lightness the mouth of the horse is certainly the very first place to start working on and to have him light pulling on the mouth of the horse hurting his tongue or his bars uh, will never give you lightness and such thing is pretty easy to do um, when you are riding a horse that is not balanced and you need to stop or you need to turn or other movements all the mistakes of lack of tack, timing and abruptness of the rider's legs and seat will be paid in the horse's mouth. Imagine for one second that we have a way, a tool to be able to release the TMJ when the horse is tense. That will allow us to ride a horse all the time light with no resistance in his mouth, paw or neck. This tool is called the jaw flexion, and it's gonna consist in making the horse swallow while riding using our hands, reins, and the bit on the mouth of the horse. We will see the jaw flexion in another video very soon. I'm sure by now you understand that how loose the reins are has nothing to do with lightness. Lightness is first a matter of balance. The second step will be the responsiveness of the horse to the rider's aids. Seat, legs, and hands. The horse has to be light to the seat, light to the legs, light to the hands. This order is the order in which the rider should apply his aids. As human, and as we are very good with our hands, we always want to do the things in the other order. We want first to act with our hands, then with the legs, and eventually with the seat. And it's exactly the opposite that what we should do. So how to make a horse light to the rider's aids? We will see that in another video. Yeah, everything takes time, and we need to focus on other points in this video. However, what I would like to talk about is that we need to have a system for the aids that is as comprehensive as possible for the horse. In other words, as natural as possible for the horse. The system of our aids has to be the same since the first day of training until the last day of training. Of course, with time and progression in this training, we're going to introduce more refinements. However, since the day number one until the, day, uh, the last day of training, we should never change anything taught in the past to the horse. Jean-Claude Racinet, in his book, Another Horsemanship, defined very well the use of the aids as follows. From a velocity to another, meaning when you speed up, when you slow down your horse. From a gate to another, from the walk to the canter, from 
the trot to the canter, from the canter to the passage, from the passage to the piaf, and so on. From a movement to another, changing from um, a medium uh, walk to a hunter zine at the walk, for example. And here is coming the most important part. Otherwise, the aid should remain quiet. The horse should sustain his impulsion by himself in safe carriage, giving this wonderful impression of freedom given by riding in lightness. In addition to a systematic and comprehensive aid system, to make a horse light to the aids, we will need a perfect timing. I have a question for you. How many of you have spent time in the past working on the timing of your seat, timing of your legs, timing of your hands, or timing of your whip? I guess not so many. So we will have to catch up with that. And of course, another video one more time. Uh, as I said in the first video, riding in lightness is first working on the rider until this last one can ride a horse correctly. Finally, another aspect to be able to have a horse light while riding is happiness. If the horse doesn't enjoy his work, he will be distracted, he will not be in harmony with his rider, and most of the time, it is not all the time, he will not be light. So, how to have a happy horse? Well, first, you really need to be light. Then you need to respect his mouth, you need to respect his capacity, keeping him interested and challenging him. Horses love to be challenged, in my experience. And you need to reward, you need to reward, 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 reward any little effort that the horse will do during his training session. So the goal for every rider should be to develop his tact, to develop his sensitivity, and to develop the sensitivity of his horse until the supreme obedience of the horse, only with the weight of the reins and the wind of the boot, le souffle de la botte. I will see you in our next video. That's all for today. Stay tuned.